Hello everyone, in today's video we will learn how to combine data from multiple files in Power BI in an efficient way such that it doesn't compromise the performance. Imagine you have three tables and you want to combine them. A usual approach would have been to combine these tables using the append feature in Power Query. But there is one drawback to this approach. When you refresh the combined table which you have created using the append feature, Power Query attempts to refresh all the tables that were appended in this combined table. And this could be quite time consuming, especially if you have heavy data or if you have data coming from multiple tables that are getting appended. So in this video, I will show you a technique on how you can combine data in such a way that Power Query will only refresh the data from the latest table, enabling better and faster query performance. So let's start off by opening our Power BI. I have a blank Power BI file open here. It has a calendar table set up in it. To bring the data into Power BI, I will connect my Power BI to the source folder. For demonstration purpose, I've only kept two files in the source folder. That is the data for January and February. So let me connect my Power BI to this folder. I'll go to get data. It will ask me for a folder path. So I'll provide that. Next, it's going to ask me what I want to do with this folder or the data inside this folder. So we can also, we also have the option to load it directly, but I want to do some couple of transformations before I load it into Power BI. So I'll click on this one, combine and transform. In the next window, which pops up, you will need to specify to Power BI about which sheets you want Power BI to pick up from each file and consolidate. So in our case, it will, it's going to be sheet one. So I'm going to click OK on that. After this, the Power Query editor will open up and here you'll be able to see that Power BI has combined the two different files into one query. Also, you will see that Power Query has created some additional queries under the transform folder. These are some functions and queries that Power Query has set up to combine the data from different files that were present in the source folder. And based on these transformations, the system has set up a new query for us, which is called monthly data. This is the query where data from different files is combined. So now I will do a couple of transformations. You can do more transformations as you like, but I'll just convert the product key into text and order date into date. Next, I will go ahead and close the query and also apply it. So there you go, we have both of our queries loaded into the Power BI. Now before we set up any visual, there is one more step to be done, which is create relationship between these two tables. So I'm going to go to the model view now, and let's create the relationship between the calendar table and the fact table. And in this case, the fact table is our monthly data table. Now let's go back to our canvas and let's go ahead and set up a metrics table. I'm going to take month from the calendar table and perhaps I'll go with taking the sales amount from the monthly table. And there we go. We have the data for both the months January and February loaded into our table. So now let's test it out. We will add the March data into our source folder and then try to refresh our query again and see if it's working. So here, as you can see, I have added the March data. Now let's go back to our Power BI and try updating our query and see if, it, if the March data comes through as well. To do that, I will right click on the monthly data table and click on refresh data. Here you might notice that upon refresh, Power Query is not only pulling up the March data, it's also refreshing the data for Gen and Feb months as well, which in our case is an overkill because we know that data in Gen and Feb files is not changing. And we will look into the solution for that as well, but for now we can see that the March data has loaded into our metrics table, which means that the query that we had set up for combining the data is working fine. Now let's get back to the problem which we just discussed. That is when we clicked on refresh data, Power Query attempted to refresh data from all the files that were in the source folder. This approach might work fine if you have a small data, 
but if you have large data sets in each of the file or if you have files for several months then this approach might be quite time consuming. So let's do a workaround to get this done faster. So first of all I'm going to add days into my table. You will see later on why I've done that. It will help us understand it better. So next to the month name, I also have the days as well now in my metrics table. I'll just close it up again. Now in my source folder, I'm going to bring the file which contains the data for the sales of April. And note that this file contains the data for the sales of April only up until the fifth day. So I'm going to go back to my Power BI and refresh the query once more to see if yes, to see if it has it correctly. So here we go. We have the April data flowing in, in there as well. As you had expected, we have the data only for the first five days. However, in this case as well, when we refresh the query, Power BI attempted to refresh the data from all the files in the folder. So how do we go about that problem? To do that, first step is to change the name of the file in the source folder, which contains the dynamic data. So I will name my latest file as running data. Now, once I've changed the name of the file in the folder, it does not impact Power BI as such because Power BI will still consolidate the data from all the files that are, there, that are there in the folder, irrespective of the names of the files. So what we want to do now is to tell Power BI to consolidate data from all the files, except for the file that is named as running data. So in order to do that, I'll go into the Power Query editor then I will navigate to the monthly data query and I'll go to the first step where it's connecting to the source folder. Here I can see that inside the source folder, first thing that Power Query is doing is checking the names of the file. So we have files over here, Gen, Feb, March, and then the running data. Over here, I'll instruct Power BI to take all the files except for the file that is named as running data. And to do that, I'll just filter out the running data file from this step and then I'll keep the rest of the query unchanged and then I'll close and apply. So as you can see now, the data for the month of April is gone because we had instructed Power BI to not take the file with the running data. But we need to bring the running data in as well. So how do we do that? To do that, we will set up a separate query and connect Power Query separately to the running data file. So we'll click on Excel workbook. And connect to the running data file. We will do the usual steps that is connect to the sheet one and then transform it. And I will do the same transformation steps which I did before. So I'll change the product key to type text. Order date is already in the date format. And I will just rename the query as latest data. Next, we will load that in. So as you can see, we have the latest data query on the side in here. However, the data is not flowing into the table. And why is that so? Because the table is taking the data only from the monthly data query, which has the data only for three months, Jan, Feb, and March. The data for the running month, which is April, is only contained in the latest data query. So we need to figure out a way to combine these two queries so that we can see the consolidated data. So how do we do that? First of all, we will navigate to the table view. Here we can see the monthly data table and the latest data table. We will combine these two tables using the union function. So I will click on the new table option. I will name my table as summary and use the union formula. Inside the union formula, I will provide the names of the two tables which I want to combine. So let's press enter and see what happens. And the formula doesn't work. So this is an important watch out when you're using the union function. For the union function to work, the number of columns in the two tables which you're combining has to be the same. So to validate this further, let's have a quick look at our tables which we are combining. This is our monthly data table. As you can see, there are six columns in here. There is an extra column for the source name. Now let's click on the latest data table. Here, as you can see, there are only five columns. And that's the reason why the union function is not working. To solve the problem that we're facing, we've got two options. Either we add a new column called source name in the latest data query, 
So this query also has six columns or we remove one column from the monthly data query. So this table has only five columns. Since we do not need the source name for our analysis, I will go to the Power Query editor and remove the source name column from the monthly data query. Now, if I go back to my summary table, which is where we use the union function, we can see that it's no longer giving us an error. The two tables, that is the latest data and the monthly data table, have been combined successfully. However, if I go back to my canvas, I will see that the April data is still not coming through. And that is because the data in this visual is coming from the monthly data query. And we need to take the data from the summary table, which is the one which is the combination of latest data and the monthly data. However, we cannot just take the data from the summary table right away. We first need to make sure we connect the summary table to the calendar table. First of all, I'll remove the sales amount, which is coming from the monthly data table. So our table will look empty for a moment. I'll go to the data modeling tab. And we don't really need the connection between the monthly data and the calendar table. So I'm going to delete this relationship. Next, I will connect the calendar table and the summary table using the date fields. After we have established the connection, we will go back to our canvas and bring in the sales amount field from the summary table into our matrix. And voila, it's working. So now comes the hottest question, which is how do we check and ensure that Power BI is only going to update the data for the month of April and it's not going to attempt to update the data from the previous months. So let's check that out. First, I would like to show you what is inside the running data Excel file, which is flowing into this dashboard currently. As you can see, the current running data file has sales data only for the first five days of April. Now imagine you have a new version of the running data file, which has the sales data for the first eight days of April, and we want to flow this into our dashboard. We will bring this new file into our folder, delete the old running data file, and rename this new file as the running data. Another option could have been to just replace the running data file with the new one. That should also work. Before we go to our dashboard, I just want to quickly show you a snapshot of what's inside this new running data file. As you can see, we now have sales data up until the 8th of April. So let's go back to our dashboard. Here, we want to update this new data that has become available. Now, one option is to refresh the summary data query. If we refresh the summary data, Power Query will attempt to refresh all the queries that are getting clubbed in the summary data, which means it will attempt to refresh data from the running data file as well as the previous months, which are static. Therefore, instead of refreshing the summary data, we will refresh the latest data query instead. With the latest data refresh, Power BI will only refresh the running data file and not waste time refreshing other files in the folder. And there you go. As expected, we can now see the data for the first eight days of April. Overall, the point of the video is that when you have data flowing in dashboard from various files in the folder and the data in only one of the files is changing, then you can rely on this technique to process your data much faster because in this method, Power BI will not attempt to refresh data from all of your files. Now, there are a few important watchouts which you need to be cognizant of when you're using the union function. First of all, the number of columns between the tables that you're unioning have to be the same. And we already saw an example of that. 
Number two, the columns are combined by their position and not by their names. If you know the append query feature in the Power Query editor, you would know that the position of the columns do not matter as far as the names of the columns and their data types are consistent. For example, if you have these two tables, Power Query append function will be able to combine these two tables as we would have expected. But with the union function, the result will look something like this because the columns are combined based on their position and not the names. And even if the names of the columns are different, Union will still combine the two tables and the columns in those two tables based on their positioning. I hope this video was informative. If you liked it, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.